Fryer, that's me. I needed to start a business back in the 19, in 1970. And uh, the business that I chose after thinking about a lot of things was a hobby shop, a model shop. I started thinking about models when I was a little kid, probably five, six, seven years old. My dad would take me to a museum in downtown Chicago. We lived in a town right next to Chicago. And anyway, they had a fabulous museum called the Museum of Science and Industry. And in the basement of the museum, they had models, mostly of ship models. The ship, when, when the ship building company would build a ship, full size, five, six, eight hundred foot ship. They ended up also making a model for uh, the customer. Whoever was buying the ship, it could be Texaco or Shell, somebody that wanted a tanker. They built cargo ships, just all kinds of ships. In any case, uh, I was just enthralled, I guess was seeing these ships and they were usually about four to six feet long, beautifully detailed and painted. And I just remember that for years. And then as I got older, I started doing a little bit of uh, model building, mostly just cars and airplanes, not ships. <laughs> and so I Enjoyed that a little bit. I, I did it on and off for a few years. And then I got in a position that I had to open up some kind of business. I had to get started and, and figure out which direction I was going to go and where this first star store would be. And the first store ended up in South Redondo. And I didn't know quite what I was going to name the store. I had to figure that out along with a lot of things at that time putting the store together, getting equipment, showcases, uh, things to sell, obviously. Uh, there was a man that had a store across the street from where I was going to be named Kurt Wagner. and He suggested putting my name on the store. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Mainly, the store is now identified with a person but also it's cheaper to register a store. It's just easier if you use your own name, even though you may add more to your name. So I decided, okay, I'll use my name, but that didn't explain what the store was. So I came up with a name, Historical Models. After thinking about a lot of different names, I narrowed it down to one, which is Historical Models. And this is the last card, and on the card is a drawing of an ambulance, World War I ambulance. At this time that I opened the store in 1970, we were in the middle of the Vietnam War, and there was a lot of people that were anti-war, millions of people. And so I had to be careful how I named the store. I didn't want to say military models or really come up with something that was too military. <laughs> anyway, I decided um, on this ambulance. But before that, I, I started the store. I didn't have a logo yet. And so I opened the store at the end of September 1970. I don't actually know the exact date, but I think it was the 27th of September. Got the doors open, ready for business. Uh, but the only fast advertising you could do at that time to get out, ads out quickly was radio, TV, and newspapers. And I decided to put ads in the local newspaper but on my ad, I wanted something on it to identify 
with the store. And I don't remember, well, I took photos of a number of different models. And I don't remember what was first. But what was, I think, second. And this is a World War I Renault tank. And uh, it was so far removed from the Vietnam War, I thought I was safe with that, which I was. And so I took photos of this and used them in the, in the newspaper ad along with a couple of other models. And a guy named Russ Bucken, I had him build this. I supplied the kit. It's a metal kit. It's very heavy. It's probably very rare today because the company that made them could have made very many of them. And this had to be put together as a kit and painted uh, by Russ. And it came out really very nice. And I don't know how we got directly to an ambulance like this, but here's two ambulances that uh, were, they say General Motors ambulance, they say GMC on them, both of them. They're made from a kit that was part of this series. This happens to be a Renault uh, town car from, well, it says 1906. And the kits, one of them was a Lozier, and uh, it was probably from the teens, I, because I don't have one anymore because I supply these kits to build these two ambulances. Uh, anyway, I got Russ to build, I, I shouldn't say I got him to build, I don't think I got him to build, I think he just on his own built one and, and brought it in and said probably, what do you think of this? And so we adopted the ambulance, I mean I had it in my mind to do one and he supplied it somehow with me not really having to ask him. Maybe it came up in a conversation that was 50 years ago. I just don't remember the details. So this is the first one he built. And it was probably delivered in the middle of 1971. And so he delivered it. And uh, I had to figure out how was I, I wanted to use it as a, as a logo. So Russ had a friend named Jack Jacobs, and Jack Jacobs was a fairly decent artist. So he drew the ambulance that we used not only on business cards, but on all the bags and shirts like I have on today. This is the last one. Of, we didn't have really make that many shirts. But we made hundreds of thousands of bags and they all had Jack Jacobs drawing on it. So kind of that's how we got started. Then I opened a second store in this very small chain of two stores and the second store was in Westwood Village, uh, California, which is probably, I think it was I'm guessing in Westward is 10 or 15 miles north and a little bit west of the Torrance store. And so now we had two stores. Well, I Rust ended up building a second model, which is this one here. And when it, it, neither one of these started out as ambulance kits, I can't even say the word ambulance, but he used the car radiator and the frame and the wheels and the steering wheel and headlights but this whole ambulance body was built by Russ. It's just styrene plastic, sheet plastic, cut up, figure out what he's going to do, glued it together, painted it and uh, they came out very very nice. This one has these have a roll down canvas on the sides, depending on if the weather got bad. And so this has got 
it down on that side, along with a couple of spare tires on the side. And he, one of the little things that he does, he made a inner tube for a tire. And why he did that, I don't know, but it adds a little bit of interest to the model. He's got a box on the floor, and that's about it. Other than that, it's empty. This one here, he actually also did a box, but it's up on the shelf. And he's got on the floor, he's got a spare tire. You probably can't enter tube, just the inner tube, not a tire. So a lot of people don't know what an inner tube is, but all tires up till the 1960s had inner tubes in them. They had a tube inside of the tire that was inflated and kept the tire round and up. <laughs> so he did a nice job and I'm thrilled to have these after all these years. It's, this one was built in, uh, or delivered to me anyway, in November 1974 for the Westwood store that we had opened at that time. And this one was in South Redondo and uh, Torrance. And we had other, other, a couple of other stores, but never built another model. We didn't need them. This move from the Old Town Mall store to this store on 182nd Street in Hawthorne, both on Hawthorne Boulevard. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this, whoever you are. Uh, this was kind of a neat time in my life. I had the store for over 27 years. I say the store, but there was really a total of five, but not all at the same time. But the main store was on Hawthorne Boulevard in Torrance, in two different locations. And many thousands of people enjoyed it. Uh, it was really interesting time in my life and enjoyable because of the models that I saw. In our showcases, we had, I counted probably about two months before we closed, over just over 1,500 models of all types. But mostly uh, a lot of airplanes, quite a few cars, quite a few tanks, some ships, and other things. So I know that we had more good models on display than any store in the world. I know of other stores that had up to 300 models, but nobody had over a thousand and we had over 1,500. So I'm pretty proud of that. It, even though I didn't build all those, they were people, customers, just liked to build models and offer them for display. So it was very rewarding. Thanks for watching.